Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renewed Homestead. Ben and Denise here, and it's been a day. What did we do this morning? We actually loaded up two cows, and they are headed to <laughs> Homesteading and Hungary's uh, mm -hmm. Homestead. Uh, you can actually find their channel on YouTube, and I will link it down below. Yeah. Um, actually tried to get video of some of it, but the mama cow decided she didn't want to go, so we had some fun chasing her for about two hours. Yeah, yeah about that, yep. Yeah. Pull out my Arizona lassoing skills and finally got her in. Yeah, he lassoed her and hobbled her gently, yeah. but got her to to the trailer, but got it done. Yeah. yeah. I was, was glad you had some horse skills. <laughs> I wish I had a horse. Would have, been, would have been a whole lot easier than getting drug around the pasture. But anyway, so yeah, good folks. There's happy to happy they're they're taking those cows and now we've got, you know, our our three, our three, our two females and Coco de Bull and yeah, it'll be good for the pasture. Absolutely. So, so, your food. What is going on with the food? Well, it's more of what's going into your food. That's the concern. And, you know, as always, we don't just, you know, we don't do these videos to fear monger or to, you know, you know, make you panic or anything like that. It's just to bring you bring you the facts as best that we can find and we always encourage you to do your own research don't take what we what we say for granted but what's that it's all we say yeah. is gospel yeah yeah do your own research for sure yeah but so mrna that's the latest thing that they want to stick in your food well the question is is it in our food will it be in our food that's what mm. we're gonna get into today yeah so now want to preface we are not doctors. Nope. We are not scientists. Nope. We are farmers. <laughs> yep. So we are not. We are not government agents, and we are not attorneys. No. <laughs> so just right off the bat, we are. We are not doctors. We are not research scientists, biologists. We are just country folk doing research and sharing that information with you. Yes, and uh, a lot of rabbit holes you can go down with this thing. So this is going to be a very, very general overview. It is not an exhaustive because um, that would take hours. Um, but we want to go into it. So first off, what is mRNA? So mRNA is basically uh, messenger RNA. So if you take a traditional vaccine, um, and I'm trying to simplify this, yeah. um, you, you get a shot of the vaccine and it creates a protein which creates antibodies which helps protect you against disease. mRNA is different. So mRNA doesn't actually inject you with that protein. What mRNA does is it basically sends information to your cells and tells the cells to create this protein um, to protect you from that disease. Um, so it's programming your cells essentially. Um, and it's interesting if you look at it because they're calling it a vaccine, but if you actually look up the SEC filings of Moderna and Pfizer, um, they actually call it gene therapy. So we'll call it vaccines um, uh, for this video, um, but even Moderna and Pfizer recognize that it's, it's more of a gene therapy than a vaccine. Yep. So now um, they have been around for a while. I know we started hearing about mRNA 2020, 2021, um, but it's actually been used in animals for several years and we'll get into that. Um, and actually in 2012, DARPA, um, was talking about using it uh, for a pandemic. It was the, the um, DARPA is basically the research arm of the military, but they were talking about this back in 2012 during the, the P3 program to actually stop an infectious disease pandemic. Um, and this has been a development for about 30 years now. So this is not new. It's just new to a lot of us. Right. And where they want to place it. Yes. Yeah, where they want to utilize it, I should say. Yes, and I do have notes that I'll be referring to. There was a lot of information. I just want to make sure that we are not um, missing anything. So I'll yeah. probably refer down to these occasionally. Right. Uh, okay. There's a lot of information we want to cover. I just want to make sure we don't miss any of it. Yeah, don't want to misquote anything. Exactly. Yeah. So for uh, just for reference, um, mRNAs have been used in poultry since about 2012. It's been used in pork or what they call swine in 2015. Um, it's been used in cattle for 
about a decade. Um, but uh, it really started uh, taking off about April of this year. Now, you're going to hear doublespeak. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association came out and said there are no licensed um, mRNA vaccines being used in cattle today. Well, you know, that's a little misleading. Um, so I don't know if y'all are aware, there was a Missouri bill, House bill, I believe it was 1169. I'm trying to remember the number. Um, but they were pushing it. wasn't It wasn't stating you couldn't use mRNA vaccines. It was basically asking for a label to be placed on that mRNA vaccine. Well, during the testimony for this House bill, there was a uh, lobbyist, a Missouri lobbyist for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, or NCBA, um, and he actually came out and admitted that he has been um, vaccinating his cattle. Uh, it's a bovine respiratory virus mRNA vaccine. And he stated and admitted that he had actually double vaccinated his cattle before he sent them to market. So we know right away that they are using it, but there are three different steps um, before you get a license, preceding a license. And you've got uh, trial, um, you have conditional, and then I believe it's, is it, yeah, trial, emergency, and conditional. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's no licensed um, mRNA vaccine being used in cattle, but <laughs> it's because yeah. it's got a conditional license right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so don't, don't buy that at all. They're, they're basically stating that because they don't want people to panic. Right. And remember, we had this big push against antibiotics years ago, mm -hmm. right? So now they're, they've gone to vaccines. And so, you know, they're trying to, uh, you know, kind of do the same shuffle that they did with the vaccines right. for the animals. So just, just keep that in mind. Right. I I, I'm just here anything. to look pretty. Oh, is that why you're, you're here to stay? <laughs> All right. So, well, as, you, as you know, she's the researcher. <laughs> so you'll notice that, that you're going to look up and it's going to say that the um, vaccines and pork didn't start until about 2018. Um, that's when Sequevity was licensed. It's actually a Merck um, uh, vaccine. It's an mRNA vaccine that they're using in swine. Um, but they had conditional licenses before. Um, so you'll see that it started being used in 2018, but that's actually false. You, you can actually go back in the records and look. It was about 2015 that they started really using it in swine. Um, they did do a, they had a conditional license for avian influenza in uh, 2015. Uh, we don't know if that's being used right now, but there is a new lipid nanoparticle um, mRNA vaccine that, that uh, is being developed for uh, the avian flu. Um, so there are actual mRNA vaccine technologies that are being developed all the time. Yep. And uh, so you might be thinking, okay, well, th this isn't really being developed that much. Um, I don't really think this is that big of a deal. Um, okay, but, but here's the thing. When you're dealing with animal vaccines, animal vaccines do not go through a lot of scrutiny. Um, so they tend to get um, licensed a lot faster um, and taken off the market and back on and back off. There's just not a lot of scrutiny. And we don't have any long-term studies um, of mRNA vaccines and how that affects the meat, how that will affect the individual. And there's a lot of people coming out saying, well, no, 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 this is fine. It won't transfer to the human, right? Well, that's, that's not entirely true. And you can actually look up, there is a study that just came out of China and they were working with mice. And they um, fed the, the, the mice, and I'm trying to say, say this simply because there was a lot of technical jargon mm -hmm. around this, but they basically fed the mice um, milk that had had an mRNA vaccine in it. Well, they took the blood of the mice and found the antibodies throughout their bloodstream. So they were able to successfully take that mRNA vaccine that was in the milk and actually get it into the bloodstream of the, the, the mice. So we have proof right there that mRNA vaccines can be transferred from humans to animals, or excuse me, from animals to humans. Right. All right, and after a vaccine, um, any vaccine, an animal actually has to undergo a with, what they call a withdrawal period before the farmer or rancher um, can actually uh, butcher the meat and have it sold. 
Now, Merck is stating that Sequevity needs a 21-day trial period, but here's the thing. I couldn't find any studies, any peer-reviewed articles that actually states that uh, after 21 days it's safe. There are no peer-reviewed articles um, that state this, so we have no idea what the waiting period is, right? And the other concern with this, we don't know how long this genetic material is going to stay within the animal, how it's going to impact us. Um, it could be one or two or three generations before we really understand how this works because there have been no long-term studies. Yep. And, the, and the other concern um, that we're dealing with is, is genetic diversity, right? So we know that um, the pharmaceutical companies, we know that the big ag corporations are trying to um, minimize the genetic diversity between livestock and between um, crops. That's why you have, you know, you used to have your specific corn, you have your specific soy, um, you have specific um, genetic material within, within cattle or sheep or whatever that are raised um, commercially. They want, to, they want to monoculture culture everything. Exactly, right? right? Because if they monoculture it, well, then they can create an antibiotic or a vaccine. It's good for everybody. Exactly. Now, yeah. what happens when you do that? Well, you might say you're putting all your eggs in one basket. What happens if you drop the basket? Yeah, mm -hmm. get one of those superbugs in there, something that their vaccine or their whatever they're giving these animals if it escapes it, it could wipe out the entire flock food, herd. Food, yeah. 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 yeah and, that's, and, and that's another issue is, you know, and, and we saw this with the Irish potato famine. Um, Ireland chose to plant one potato crop instead of three or four different potato crops. One, one type of. One, yeah, sorry. One, yeah, one type of, of potato crop. Instead of diversifying and allowing three or four different types of potatoes, um, they did one, and when that blight came through, it annihilated it. Now, had they had some diversity and three or four different potatoes, you probably would, would have had one or two varieties that would have survived. So the minute that you start um, narrowing down diversity, you start um, introducing all of these superbugs and all of these diseases, and not only did we see that in the potato famine, but we see that with bees. Yeah. No, was, yeah, you... You, you narrow the gene pool, you increase your risk. But yeah, the, the bees, for example, you know, every 30 years, they have to, you know, the honeybees are not indigenous to America. They had to be brought over, they're European. And they get these mites. And, you know, they, they find a, there's a more or less a pesticide that helps control the mites. But after so long, about 30 years, it leaves behind a super mite, if you will, a super bug, that now they have to come up with new medication to eradicate that, and the, you know, the cycle just continues. About every 30 years, they have to come up with something else to inoculate or spray or, or you know, whatever it is to get this under control. So, Oh, well, yeah, and it just makes the mite stronger. Oh, it exactly. creates this massive super bug because, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, for you beekeepers out there, mountain mint is supposed to, we were trying to test it, is supposed to help control the, uh, those mites. The bees. We're testing it we're out. We're testing it, yeah. We'll, we'll get into that as, as we get some results on that. If we get some bees back, yes. our bees are gone. Yes. So, and, you know, for everybody to say, well, they would never do this without our consent. They're not going to do this. They'll let us know. Well, number one, why are they so opposed to the labeling then? But number two... They did it with fluoride. They still yeah. do. Why, why do we still have fluoride in tap water? Yeah. Right? It doesn't so, help the teeth, apparently. No. So it's just, it's interesting when, when people say, well, they wouldn't do that. Yeah, they would. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they have yeah, been you, doing you it for a while. The, you, you compiled a list a while back of all the uh, government testing on its people. Yes, I did. Yeah. It was actually very eye-opening and terrifying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So... Yeah, yeah but you, that's a whole other video to yeah, get into. If you, if, yeah, if you don't think you're a human no. guinea pig. Yes, and, and, uh -huh. these are, and these are in development, y'all. So there's a lot of this. So in case you didn't know, Merck has partnered with Moderna for their mRNA technology. Um, they're working on other mRNA vaccines that are undisclosed. Um, Bayer has partnered with BioNTech um, in 2016. That's for livestock as well as your pets. Um, so this is... 
This is in development now. It's already being used in poultry. It's already being used in swine. We know it's being used in cattle. Um, and they, they um, published a study out of China how amazing these mRNA vaccines are. Mm -hmm. But here's the issue with a lot of what these studies state. You want to? Well, it's not a matter of what they state. It's a matter of where it's being funded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the companies doing the studies are being fundied, fun, fundied, 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 yeah, fundied. created a new word today, <laughs> are being funded by the companies producing the mRNAs. So you think it might be a little skewed or weighted a little heavily in favor of those companies? There's so no conflict of interest No there. conflict of interest. So. Well, and they're now saying that regular vaccines don't do enough, so that's why they have to create these mRNA vaccines. Um, but if your animals are that sick, mm -hmm that they have to have all of this medication, well, then there's a bigger problem there. And, and Josh uh, Stony Ridge Farmer mm -hmm. um, did a video on this a couple weeks back, and he, you know, was kind of on a rant saying that, you know, we're basically selling sick animals to people. And if you went out to a pasture and you saw a cow or a sheep or something that looked sick, you're not going to pick that out and go, I want to eat that, no. right? You're going to be like, well, no, but that's what happens. Because they're in these conf the, these confinement facilities, because they're being raised the way they are, they have to rely on all these antibiotics and all of these vaccines um, in order to keep them healthy. And if you have to do that, there is something seriously wrong. Yeah. And that and, is majority of our food system, y'all. And that's where we could go down another whole rabbit hole because some of you out there are saying, well, if we didn't do that, we couldn't feed the world. Well, that's garbage. That's there are ways, and we've talked about that in other videos, and we're not going down that rabbit hole, but we don't have to treat animals like that. No. No, and when so. they're sick, we eat them. It creates inflammation. Our omega-6 to omega-3 ratios are off. It doesn't have the minerals and the vitamins that we should would normally be taking in. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. And here are, I wanted to give you a list of foods. So if y'all are like, well, this isn't a big deal. This is off somewhere. Well, yeah, these... And it, it, and like my son, for instance, he is on a more vegan diet now because he doesn't want to ingest a lot of this stuff. That's a big part of why he's, he's doing the vegan thing. But if that's your, your, your thought process, listen to this list. Yeah, so foods that they feel are a good fit for MR, mRNA edible vaccines and ones that they are working on. Potatoes, rice, tomatoes, bananas, tobacco, leafy greens, alfalfa, carrots, and algae. Um, and in California, they're actually um, working uh, to develop a foliar spray. So all you have to do is actually spray the plants with it and it will take in that mRNA. And the USDA is actually providing grant money um, for the University of Iowa to develop more of these mRNA vaccines. Crop, um, so, crop nesting with mRNA. And that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, and, and if y'all think you're going to just buy organic and defeat this, uh -oh. organic says nothing about vaccines. Everything that you buy that's organic can absolutely have a vaccine. So you buy that, you spend all that money for that, you know, grass-fed beef in the store, it's probably been vaccinated. So just keep that in mind, yeah. that grass-fed organic I, beef I, in the store. Yes, there, you can find exceptions. Yes, you can dig, dig, dig and find exceptions, but, but the majority. Yes, yeah. and uh, another thing that you probably haven't thought of, um, the meat in your store, a lot of it does not come from America. So this is what's, this is what's uh, scary to me. Um, back in, two, I believe it was 2016, Congress yes. repealed the country of origin labeling. So there used to have to be a country of origin saying this is from China or Venezuela, Argentina, Brazil, whatever it was. They removed that. So they don't have to put a country of origin labeling on our meat. So we have no idea where the meat actually came from and what's happening over in those countries. Um, and you're like, well, you know, America wouldn't take in food that's from other countries that's tainted. We do it all the time. We do it all the time. And we don't have control over what China's doing or Brazil's doing or Argentina's doing, right? Like we can hope how they're raising their animals, but we have far, we, our, our rules here are far less strict than in Europe. Yeah. So there are foods they allow here that they will not allow in, in Europe or at the, in the European Commission. So it's just, it's just something to consider and be aware of, um, you know, and, and, and we don't know the long-term effects of this, like we've said. 
The issue is we don't know how this is going to affect our body. Um, we don't know um, if you change the genetics of an animal. And remember, they admitted that this was gene therapy. So we don't know what happens to any of this. Um, like we said, it, it may take a while for this to show up. Yep. So this is where our concerns are with this. Um, I don't trust anything that hasn't been fully vetted. Um, and I certainly don't trust it when you've got our government agencies in bed with pharmaceutical companies, which has been proven time and time and time again. So for those watching us, this is not conspiracy theory. This is fact, and you can look all of this up, how much funding the USDA and the FDA actually get, especially the FDA from the companies that they're supposed to be monitoring. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make me feel real good when somebody's like, oh, this is safe. Oh, is it? <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, the FDA says it's safe. Okay, well, the FDA is going off of what study funded by who. That's You've got to, you've got to question it. You, know, you just can't blindly follow that. Yeah, and I do think it's interesting that when somebody poses a question and states, do I really want this in my food, right? It's it's not a, hey, that's a good question. Maybe we should look into this. It's a, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist now. Yeah. How dare you question How the dare narrative. I question, right? Uh-huh. So, you know, like I said, this is just a very broad overview of what the mRNA vaccines are. They're, they've, they've, to me, they've been disingenuous and they have misled us. They've lied to us about this being in meat because it absolutely is. They've got a conditional license right now. And the farmers who are doing it are admitting to doing it. Exactly. So, so, so we brought you the problem. And as always, we try to give you a solution. So, And we've I talked about this in yeah, multiple videos. I, I think you know our solution. Yeah. Grow your own food. You know, we've talked about that. Grow your own food and raise your own meat. That's right, you know. And if you're in an HOA, get yourself some quail and some rabbit. If you're not in an HOA, why aren't you raising uh, some meat birds? And uh, yeah, and yeah. HOA, some HOAs will allow chicken. So yeah, 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 they just don't want the roosters, which yeah. are kind of adorable when they're little and trying to grow up they and get are that adorable. teenage. Well. So, uh, it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. It is hilarious. Well, and if you have a yard, right, you can get a few meat birds yep. and raise them on your pasture across your yard. So, so you could do that. You have yeah. eggs from your chickens and. Yep. They keep the grass cut down and mm -hmm. fertilize it. Yeah. yeah. They're great. Yeah. And, and grow your garden. You know, just if, if you're, uh, it, that was a weird bug. Yeah. Or whatever um, it was. Inexperienced gardener, start with some zucchini. You can feed the whole neighborhood with zucchini. <laughs> right. <laughs> you might get sick of it, but. At least you'll have at least it. You know, at least you know that it hasn't been uh, doctored up. Yeah, and if you can't for whatever reason, maybe you're in an apartment, maybe you just have a small lot, maybe for whatever reason you're not able to raise your own meat, um, like we've said before, look in your local community, um, you, you know, find homesteads or farms near you. Now, it can be difficult to find. I know around here I'm, I'm really trying to find um, because we, uh, baby, who we were going to process in the fall for beef is gone now, so we don't actually have um, a cow to butcher this fall, and we love beef. So, um, I, you know, went on to farmmatch.com, but I've been trying to find a place here that does not use, um, that doesn't use the vaccines, that doesn't use the antibiotics that raises them like Joel Salatin, and Greg Judy, like we do. Mm -hmm. I'm having a really hard time finding it. So I went to farm match and found, I believe it's prairie f foods and yeah, it's more expensive than what we're going to find in the store for ground beef, but it, it averages nine seventy five a pound. Um, and if you look, you know, your steak and your ground meat, I mean, the steak, you're spending $28 for a ribeye steak a pound now in the store yeah. a lot of times. So I don't feel nine seventy five dollars a pound is unreasonable. But go to farmmatch.com and look if you can't find them. If they are in your community, find, um, find those farms and those homesteads. Support local because we need to bring the food system back to local. We have to stop this big agriculture um, because it is this model that we're using that is making everything so sick. Yes. This is not a paid endorsement for farmmatch.com. No, it however, is not. However, but, but, uh, but, you know, it's, nine, a, it's nine, a tool. It's a tool. Yeah. Nine seventy five a pound. Mm -hmm. And as we had stated the last time we were doing rocker time, I don't know what we're going to call this porch time, rocker time. <laughs> um, you know, if you're eating healthier, you're going to be healthier, less visits to the doctor, less antibiotics, less garbage you're going to have to put in to keep yourself healthy. 
So, you know, think of it as an investment rather than an expense. Yes. Um, and you can look at, you can do your own digging into this. Joel Salatin's, um, he has a podcast called Beyond Labels. Um, they've done um, several episodes on this. I know Melissa K. Norris has done information on this. Um, I'll put the link into Josh's when he's talking about the sick meat um, that, that people are growing. I, I will put that link in that description and I'll, I'll find the Beyond Podcast ones too. Everything that we've researched here will be actually in the description. Um, so you can look it up yourself. Like I said, this is just a very broad overview, but I spent hours delving into this and there's a lot of rabbit holes that we could go down with this, but, but it's, it essentially comes down to this. They are using mRNA vaccines. There are no long-term studies on mRNA vaccines. Um, we don't know how long that genetic material stays in the cow. We don't know how it's going to affect us. And because of those questions, and because we know the animals are sick, because if they were healthy, they wouldn't need all of this. We don't want it in our food. And real quick, before we close out, we get a lot of comments from vegetarians and vegans every time we do these videos. Yep. So I'm just gonna lay it out there. Something has to die in order for us to eat, whether you are vegan, vegetarian, or uh, omnivores, carnivores, whatever. Something has to die, whether that's life in the soil or insects, or whether that's a cow or a sheep or a pig. Yeah. So something has to die in order for us to eat. Right. Now, Ed, in the case of my son, he doesn't want, his, doesn't, doesn't want this stuff in his meat, but he also does not like how commercial farming is done and how the animals are treated, and we can appreciate that. No animal should be neglected, abused, doped up just to stay standing. I mean, that's, that's not a life, and that's, mm -hmm. that's why we do what we do. One bad day. These animals, we give them the best life possible. They have one bad moment, and you know we do everything we can to use every part of that animal out of respect. And you know I can understand that, but yes, we get... We get the uh, the vigilantes out there. The how dare you? How could you? How hey, evil you, we are! Yep. And how 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 could you slaughter your own animals? Well, you know, again, the meat that you are eating is not born on styrofoam, and you know the veggies are, that are being grown uh, is causing a whole lot of whole lot of little lives to be be. We kill far killed. more insects yeah. and microorganisms and worms. Um, Every year, we kill far more of them by eating our, the corn and the soy and the beets and everything else that's grown for a lot of these vegetarian and vegan diets mm -hmm. than we do the, the livestock that we consume as omnivores. Oh. So, and, and you say, so what? It's an insect or a worm. Well, God wouldn't have put it there if it didn't have a purpose. So True. Even though what's the purpose for multiflora rows here? Everybody's got to hate something. <laughs> Is that the purpose? Okay. That's the only reason I can think of is, whoo Sounds good to me. It's awful stuff. Yes. All right, well. I hope we'll you see. learned something. Yeah, yeah, please comment. You know, we, we appreciate them, even even if you're calling us conspiracy theorists, crazy, uh, animal-hating, meat-eating, whatever whatever you want to call us. <laughs> that, that, yeah, but we really appreciate y'all. We, we really appreciate you spending time with us. We know everybody's busy and... Yeah. We just uh, thank you well, for spending your time with us. Well, and, and we know you're busy and you might not have the hours that to research like she has. And, and so we, you know, we, we hash it out, although she does most of the talking because she does most of the research and has it all up here. We do, we hash it out beforehand because we try to trim any of the extra fat off because we know these videos can run really long and I'm just going to make it even longer by saying that, but. Yeah, there was a lot more that we could have gone uh, into, but yeah. But. There it is in a nutshell. So yes. anyway, make sure you go over to renewedhomestead.com forward slash shop. Get yourself a hori hori knife or some deodorant or a little root and hormone, comfrey root we comfrey have available. Root. Yes, we do still have some comfrey root. Yeah. We have people that ask how they can support us. That is absolutely a way that you can support us. Yep. And we're uh, we need to go live at some point. So we're trying to figure out the day. Now that it's light out at night, we don't have really good lighting out, out here yet. So we yeah. need to just go outside and, and do a live and maybe we can walk around, show the animals and yeah, yeah. we'll see. We'll you see. We're trying to figure out how we're going to do it though. <laughs> yes. So. All right, everybody. Hope you are well. Please pray for us. We're, we're praying for you. We're praying for our <clears throat> leaders and government uh, here and around the world. And, you know, anyway, God bless. We'll see y'all on the next video. Bye y'all. Bye.